Cook is a whole bunch more than just New Zealand's highest mountain. And we're on this like tiny little island in the middle of the vast Pacific, and it just gets absolutely battered by the most violent weather. And it's a very dramatic, very young mountain chain, and it's an incredibly violent one because of that. Mount Cook's been basically a dream of mine since my parents told me they climbed it. You can see it as you drive up the Mackenzie country from the highway and it just stands there. It's such a proud mountain and it's something that I've always aspired to ski. I'm excited, I'm nervous, I'm, I'm worried that the weather's not going to allow us to do it uh, or the snow will be too icy. We don't just want to ski it. We all wanted to absolutely rip it to pieces. Most of the people that have tried to ski cook have failed due to weather conditions. Yeah. The weather in New Zealand, that's the thing. <laughs> I think our percentage of getting to the top is probably about 20%. Or 10%, maybe. But... <laughs> <laughs> I really like the philosophy of this trip. Obviously, the big objective is to go and ride Mount Cook. But as well, a lot of really cool stuff around it, you know, in the outdoors, in different activities. That's what I call a down day. <laughs> You can go biking, you can go rock climbing, you can surf, and it's kind of cool to have this contrast. Nadine is wondering what the <laughs> hell we're doing. Crazy running. people <laughs> running to go to cold water. It feels that this adventure is not just about skiing, that it's a really complete adventure. in New Zealand. <laughs> Can you believe it? Xavier and Nadine and all these people from Europe who've spent a lot of time showing me around Europe, taking me on amazing adventures. And now I sort of get to repay the favor. The season's been so different for me because I've been so motivated by this trip and I've been out on way more expeditions, building up to it trying to get fitter, stronger, more comfortable in high alpine. And all the while, it's just standing there staring at me. I know Sam from the Freer World Tour from back in the days. And uh, yeah, he's, he's a big charger. He's doing such sketchy lines, you know, you, you would never ski or you would never think that it's skiable. Oh. Look at that, where is he where going? Where are you going, exactly, thank you. Look wow. at that, wow! wow. Sam Smoothie! <laughs> Go the Kiwi! I've had the chance to do one cool trip last year to, to Vanuatu to ride a, an exploding volcano, and then now it's our first real trip on snow together.
Uh, I got a little cold. That's kind of annoying because the guys went out now surfing and trip-wise it's better to stay on the land. It's pretty hard to to plan a trip like this and uh, if you want to get a mountain mission done like Mount Cook, yeah, can be interesting. what the weather would be like and I said it might be a couple of brief showers <laughs> and it's hosing down with rain <laughs> and I'm a little lost and we only have three roads it's, a, it's just a mere summer shower mate oh. it'll blow over it'll blow over you never know in Southland man blue one minute rain the next thunderstorm last night I'd like to give you the full package you know well, closing day isn't exactly anything. It's more of a melting pot of culture and uh, energy. You've just got to get involved. The name of the game here is to ski with as little snow as possible. Classic going through here as well. Yeah. And the rocks? The rocks, well, it's just so it's not too strong, but it does catch you oh. and it does bleed you. Where the hell am I? in the most beautiful way. Loving it, that's the best way to get into the trip. Auraki is at the heart of the, the South Island creation story, the oldest name of the island, Te Waka o Auraki, the canoe of Auraki. Auraki is the god which links us to creation. It's a central cultural feature of our people. Because the first thing you say in Māori is not, what is your name? The first thing you say is, no whēkwe, where are you from? Where you're from? And the things that symbolise that, they are the things that are important. many sports uh, you can be on the same level than the guys and that probably made it for me so funny to see the guys struggling and climbing and shouting and try to get up there <laughs> it's not only about climbing one route or two it's being at the rock and uh, hanging out there get the vibe get the spirit of the space kind of the same than with skiing or with surfing you go somewhere and you spend some time there and time is just passing away and you, you don't recognize it. It was pretty impressive watching her move so calmly and confidently when you've been just shaking and barely hanging on. <laughs> Absolutely schooled yet again by Nadine on the rock walls. From the free ski scene or steep skiing scene, everybody knows Xavier. It's quite impressive what he's doing, what he's still doing. 
it's amazing to have him out here and hopefully we can do some uh, full speed aggressive riding in Vion styles. A big part of what is different about New Zealand mountains is our proximity to the ocean. And so we do get a lot of precipitation, we get a lot of humidity. We have to deal with changeable weather here in New Zealand as part of being a mountaineer and a skier and in our mountain environment is being able to maximise your opportunities with the weather windows. It might only be a few hours, it might be a day, it might even be three days. Yeah, you just have to get a lot more savvy with how to deal with, with that weather. The old weather gauge hasn't picked up any snow. Just a couple of inches of rain. And any more in relation to South Basic Sun is probably the first one. Okay. Uh, oh, well, hey, well, thanks for that, mate. If we have a look at the cop forecast, you can see that just that westerly weather just keeping on firing. And... You know, I mean, we're window shopping, eh? If, uh, <laughs> grab what you can. Yeah. Um, if you look at the forecast for, for seven Well, Sam has warned me before coming here always, like that the weather in New Zealand is changing super fast and it's like quite full on and hard to predict. And I think that we've witnessed that since the beginning. So what other options we got so far? Yes, yeah, so the cook is cook. dead. Yeah, I know. He's <laughs> not there. <laughs> I mean, the cook mission is there. Yeah, so we no. need to find something else. Super frustrating meeting there. The weather at Cook is looking pretty horrific. I don't know if the conditions are going to allow us to get this done at all on this shoot. But we've got half a window tomorrow, so we're going to go and try and smash this oh how cool that we scouted earlier. Fingers crossed we get something done. Weisel region, so we're headed north from Wanaka, getting slowly closer to Mongkuk. The road is somewhat deteriorated, so we're just kind of going to take a little bit of an off route and hopefully get back onto it. <coughs> How do you feel? Uh, not really good. A little yeah, dry. Much coughed the whole way here from Monica. <coughs> yeah, so it's the one. It's coming from the inside. No, uh, the cold from surfing got pretty worse. I cannot even breathe through my nose. And my chest is just exploding. So. I'd rather stay here. Access is one of New Zealand's classic issues. And uh, rivers are a large part of this. So we're lucky it's not a uh, river's not higher with snowmelt, because it might have stopped us in our tracks right off the bat, to be honest. Oh, get the head. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do, huh? Yeah, hands off. <laughs> Classic Kiwi bush bash approach. Good times. Love carrying skis through the jungle. <laughs> Having a good time? Finally found the snow line. Not so glorious up on this side. Or that side. Mainly just avalanches everywhere. But it's pretty cleaned out. Stability is supposedly good. It's a shame the den can be up here. It's a pretty wild place. And we just have a casual 800 meters of vert till we get to the summit. You can see just a thin smear of windblown snow on top of this just white ice. <laughs> it's going to be really exciting as it runs out halfway down the floor. 
so many steps. Nadine is down there. <laughs> yeah. Way down there. Skiing inherently in New Zealand is hard. Um, there's a lot of walk crossings across rivers, walking up mountains to the snow line, and, uh, and then the mountains are just gnarly themselves. They're carved by glaciers, so you get a lot of steep lines and uh, some sort of just going uh, precipitously just to the valley floor. Drop it! Snowing. Well, Fraser is like my sort of main adventure partner. We do mostly everything in that realm together and done most of our adventures in New Zealand together, even off to Bolivia together and uh, done some pretty wild things. Fraser pretty much makes everything look good on skis, almost especially when I don't. Playing in the mountains. Now, he's been a guide for years and I've been real slack and never got out with him. He's always like, oh, I got the best view of Cook the other day flying over it. And I was just like, oh, recon flight with a difference? So we fly like this. Yeah. We fly ready to jump. We fly ready to catch you out. Holy smokes. So lock your thumbs around it like that and push out. Do that now? Yeah. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you said yes. <laughs> okay, let's start that again. <laughs> I hate this safety briefing. <laughs> Before getting here, Sam told me that he would have a really cool idea to go and scope the east face of the Mount Cook with a special way. He made it really sound like a, a little treat. <laughs> to be honest, I was yeah, a tiny bit nervous. You, know, you imagine you're up there on a really windy ridge, you know, really up high in altitude, close to 4,000 meters. We started going up, so using the thermals uh, to go up, bomb, super bumpy like pretty full on. I was like really trusting uh, Gavin. And then, uh, yeah, got a bit seasick. Yesterday we got our faces melted off, just flying around the McKenzie country in formation, three gliders, getting chased by helicopter. Uh, this is as close to Top Gun as I think I'm ever gonna get.
an island in the middle of the Pacific and it's just you, the west coast, the east coast and this massive mountain below you and you just get to ridge saw that place. It is awesome. definitely king and I think it's kind of the reason why I feel we chose to take these guys up in a glider. We could have easily flown around in a helicopter, gone on a nice sort of like clear day with no wind but it's that respect for the mountains and the weather that I think is such a key part to skiing in New Zealand. This island has shaped us and made us, rather than we shaping it. In our mythology, Alraki was voyaging on the ocean with his brothers because they were unhappy with their father, Raki, the sky father. They were unhappy because he'd taken a second wife. After a time, he wanted to return to his home. As he started to do so, his necessary chance failed and his waka was stranded on an undersea reef. It lies on its side, with the high side along the top, represented now by the by Southern Alps, and that is the beginning of life on the wreckage of this island, Te Waka or Auraki. And so it is a symbol of great cultural importance to us. It's at the core of our identity. Auraki Matatu. Auraki always stands. I could see that there was a lot of ice on all the... Aspects. Like on the west, on the south, like full on everywhere. Like, like but the more... east was difficult to see because it was in the shade. I could see one big... one big streak of ice coming down from Zubrigans, but... Was it ridge. black, like... Uh, like grey? Yeah. Hmm. That's not good. This the thing is, like, this is New Zealand, and you know, it's gonna be most likely icy, most places. <laughs> so it yeah. just kind of comes down to your own personal motivation as to what you want to ski. I I personally want to try for Cook. Anyway, but obviously we just have to be okay with turning around if it's too bad. You don't have yeah, you don't have any backup plan in, in the head at all. Yeah, no, there's backup plans, but it's just, it's not in terms of like, okay, this is icy, tomorrow we go and do that, you know? Like yeah. It just, you have to reset, like, you the agree. options in here aren't necessarily any easier. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, like, you know, it's that's sweet. what I'm saying. Like, it's not, oh, it's icy on Cook, we can just easily jump ship and go here. The issues that you face with Cook aren't going away with other objectives. I think they are, for sure. Every mountain is different. Well, yeah, every mountain's different, man. Yeah, but, like, it's not... Different. It's not, like, just going to be, oh, we can go and do this easy thing. Like, it's New yeah. Zealand. Everything is hard. Okay. That's the thing I'm trying to get across to you guys, that there is no, like, quick fix here. Yeah, this is our last window. So, as you say, if we miss it, 
kind of we miss the window and that's it. So I think it would be mm -hmm. really clever if we could get a quick, better inspection flight and it would be less romantic than the gliders <laughs> with the helis, but um, we need to go into something that we're kind of sure. Nadine, I like met her a bit on the Fred World Tour. I've been yeah quite impressed about her skiing, and I've been following her and stuff with with her mountaineering and her passion for the mountains. She's such a strong skier and climber, and kind of just force of nature, really. Like coming back from such a brutal injury. <laughs> I had an open fracture tibia phibia. I'm still not 100%. Now it's three years ago that happened, and uh, yeah, it kind of makes me nervous when I start to hear the helicopter with the, with the camera on it, and uh, I know the mission is on. There are people who have climbed all around the world, who have climbed the seven summits, have failed or even come to harm on Mount Cook because they've taken it for granted. It's a, a mountain that has uh, a huge amount of potential threat and hazard, be it crevasses or uh, ice cliff avalanches, rockfall. There's so much to it that until you really step out onto it, you know, you haven't really gone that far in New Zealand mountains yet, so hopefully it's time. Throughout the whole trip, Mount Cook has been always kind of the, like the ghost of the trip, like kind of being there and like we could always see him in the distance and knowing that we would eventually have to go and confront to it. Well, that's, that's two kind of concerns we're really looking for is just like the spot, the snow surfaces, if we're looking at black ice or yeah. Some form of skiable snow, and then also what the even we, as we go back to land, and the two Bergschrund entrances are our main concern as well. Yeah, it's super easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this has definitely got ice, man. Yeah, 100% packed. Oh, it's way steeper than what I thought. Uh, this is uh, well tricky. Hell of a mountain to stand under, hey? It's definitely leans on you. <laughs> it's massive. There's a lot of ice to dodge. To me, nothing with the weather is certain, so I'll wait for the dawn. It's pretty nasty out there. I don't know what it's going to be like up there, but it's not ideal. Not ideal at all. You guys good? Mm-hmm. You're off now. Bergschrung now, which is this kind of big crevasse at the bottom of the slope. And it's great news because the wind seems to have come a lot. So this is really cool. Because it was not looking promising an hour ago. <laughs> okay, going for it.
so we have gone through uh, the first big crack, which is a good thing. Uh, we've done the, the Bergschrank, and we've gone away from this, this massive uh, Cerax that were above our heads. Once we, once we got off the skis onto the crampons, uh, I think it started to lift us. We were like, this is actually snow. We dug down through it, it was stuck on. It changed from this really super chaotic going into war feeling to being like, you know, almost fairy tale with uh, the moon lighting up the face and like a really calm air. <laughs> How do you feel? Uh, pretty good so far, yeah. Conditions are better than expected, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. really much better, I think. Down here. <laughs> we yeah. don't know about the top, yeah. but at least down here it's good, huh? Yeah. We got about a third of the way up and we found one of these big grey ice patches. Hey, this is good, huh? The grey stuff, just a crust. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking banger, huh? Woohoo! Such good news. That makes it all worth it, to be honest. I think it's my favorite moment. is good. You know, you come back from this darkness, this intensity, you've had to motivate yourself so much to get there and suddenly everything is just like so pink. You know, the face is directly facing uh, the east, so you actually see the whole sunrise in, in such an epic way, which you never ever have in your life. Look at that, that's real. And it's not icy. And the snow is not too bad. <laughs> Pretty stunning up here. Well, we finally found some of the ice we were terrified of. It's not been as much, thankfully. We can see the summit ramp up there. It's a uh, borderline here. Oh, uh, yeah, it's like literally like it's like right where you are. That's it. Stay right on the arete. Yeah, have a check in there, Sam. Like, because I think it's pretty fucking bulletproof. It was hard ice on the left, hard ice on the on the right, and if you would just stay there, doo -doo 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 -doo, you would make it to the summit. And... Last few steps to the summit ridge. Wow, holy shit, that is glorious. <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck. Good work, huh? Good job. So good. When it finally came right, I was just still skeptically looking around, waiting for something to go wrong. I think it really wasn't until I clicked in and pretty much was ready to drop in that I was like, this is happening. Hey, Zev, drop him. Zev, dropping. Smoothie dropping out the top section, very slowly, obviously.
I think that from here is good. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> that was gnarly, hey? Yeah, it was oh, nice. Nice skiing. That is one of the best runs of my life. To have that dream lay in front of you and just have the conditions to ski it how you've always dreamed, like, it's just so immense. It, it's like impossible to put into words how good that felt. Yeah, my first thing was like, how the hell isn't there more people that have ridden it? Clearly, the thing that sets apart this mountain from the rest is this aggression of weather, which it gets all the time. It's generally not the skiing, it's the snow or the weather that shuts you out. And uh, to have both of those perfectly lined up on the last day we could have done it due to our schedule is just like the second coming of Jesus in terms of miracles. <laughs> Probably one of the most impressive and challenging ski descents I made so far. It also yeah, inspired me how I want to progress myself as a skier, you know? It just means a lot to sort of um, walk in the footsteps of some of New Zealand's greatest mountaineers. Got 1.25 centimetres until you hit the family jewels. And uh, that's when things aren't OK. Super remote. <laughs> <laughs> Middle of nowhere, crazy. 
great fish diving. That yeah. was not the plan this morning. <laughs> <laughs> This beast! I've been dreaming of this my whole life. It's so cool. <laughs> but when I dropped in, I knew you know that, that was the one place not to make a mistake. So take it easy, go down with both size axes, make it really safe. And then after that it was open bar. You know, I've been trying to get Zav to New Zealand for years and here we are drilling my all-time favorite goal to the absolute ground, and it's just perfect. It almost seems to be just be hovering, watching everything around me and having to input nothing. Just letting the skis slide, let them run, dodge the slough, chase your friend. Your, your hero from when you were a kid is riffing down in front of you and you're pouring slough down on top of him. What a day to be alive. I didn't realize that you know, this face would be one of my kind of trophy faces, but it clearly is one of the faces that I will remember forever. In general, we had just uh, really low expectations to get this mission done. Like in life, uh, yeah, you get, don't give life the chance to surprise you if you expect too much and that was cool. How much this means to me is kind of hard to put into words. It kind of makes me tear up a little bit, to be honest. It's to achieve that goal that I've always wanted and, and that mountain means so much to me and, and through my family and you know, the country that I love. And it means more to me than anything I've ever won or skied before.